Hello, hello, wow. Good morning. <laughs> My name is Rob Lindbergh. I am one of the announcers. And who's in Tallinn for the first time? Put your hands up. Nice. Very nice. I see a few Finns. I see a few Greeks. I see a few Belgians. Any, any Germans here? Germans, yes. Italians? Perfect. Anyone from Australia? Israel? I was going to get to you last because you're always the loudest, but, you know, it's all good. Um, <laughs> India. India, yes. India, anyone from Australia? No? New Zealand? Hong Kong. Nice. Round of applause. Who is doing their first Ironman? Yes, let's give them a round of applause. And then the question which is even cooler, who's doing their first triathlon event ever? One, two, there we go. Now, I will see you on the start line and I will see you on the finish line too. Ero. Our head referee, he is a man that you only want to see today. You don't want to see him give you a yellow, red, or a blue card. But he's going to inform you how to not get a card. So I'm going to get it over to Ero. Let's hear it for a head referee. Thank you, Robson. Yeah, I will have a longer conversation with you right now, maybe, let's say, 20, 25 minutes. If you have questions, then, okay, 26, 27 minutes. Uh, so let's try to be... Quick. So, our race briefing, uh, we talk about schedule, courses, rules, and also some procedures uh, during the check-in, check-out. So, let's start with the schedule first. So, tomorrow, uh, yeah, Expo and Info, everything is open uh, from 10 o'clock. And uh, you have shuttle buses from uh, Viro Hotel that uh, will start coming at half past 12, up to 7 o'clock in the evening. We have the shuttle bus timetable also in the slides in a few minutes. Also, you have received this info, I guess. At 1 o'clock, we open a transition area for bike check-in. It's open till 8 o'clock in the evening. During the same time, we have bike technical service also available in G1. And from half past 2 till half past 4, we have official swim training. Uh, you can swim uh, during this training up to the first white buoy, which is, let's say, three, four hundred meters from the shore. If you go to swim in another time, let's say in the morning, in the evening, then you can't go further than the beach area, which is, let's say, up to the yellow buoys. Because if you go further the yellow buoys, you can uh, see the rowers, so to avoid clashing with them, just uh, stay in the beach swimming area if you go outside the official swim training time. So tomorrow you have two hour slot uh, to swim up to the first uh, white buoy. And uh, tomorrow evening we have a charity event. Uh, we raise money for Ukrainian triathletes who currently can't live in their country in training in, in Bulgaria. And after this uh, charity event, we have a concert at half past seven behind this tent on the stage. On Saturday morning, uh, shuttle buses will uh, come early, half past four till 5.15 from Biro Hotel. Actually, there is a park next to the hotel uh, and there is a bus stop. You also have this information. We open T1 for last minute adjustments at uh, 5 o'clock in the morning, so it's open till half past 6. And at the same time, we have also, again, bike technical service available. Bike technical service will stay there till uh, we close transition area of the swim. So even if you have some problems after the swim, when you take your bike, you see anything is not working, you have a flat tire or anything, then we have still technical service available in T1. Start is 6.45 and check out in the evening is starting at half past five and it's open till uh, 30 minutes after midnight. So the earlier you come, the better for uh, technical officials also. So please, please come as soon as you can after the finish. 
And on Sunday, we have a vote ceremony and slot allocation at 11 o'clock, again, here on the stage, behind this tent. So shuttle buses, again, here on the slides. So at half past 12, the first bus will leave Viro, and uh, after every 30 minutes during the day, there are bigger gaps, let's say 2, 3, 4 o'clock, and then again, up to 7 o'clock, we have buses coming. They are stopping here in Rokalmare on the main street, and then they go to the T1, which is in Harku. On Saturday, first buses are leaving half past four, five of them. Then uh, 15 minutes later, three buses and five, and 5.15 leaves the last bus from the Viru Hotel. So uh, enough buses. Of course, you can come by your own at any time on Friday or on Saturday. It's up to you. So tomorrow, if you come to check in, which is open from one o'clock, uh, you need to have all these six items with you. Every year we have somebody who doesn't have either the race number or run back. So if you miss any of these, you can't check in. So you need to have a bike with a sticker on it. Also bike helmet with a sticker. Please remove all your old stickers. So we, we don't want to see any other numbers on your bike, on your helmet, just this race number, what you have here. Blue bike bag, red run bag, everything you need to take with you tomorrow. Also, please put your sticker already on the, on the bags, so just to have the very smooth check-in process. Wristbands, I guess you already, most of you already have. Those who haven't, you will get it from the registration with your start package. And definitely race number. If you don't have race number tomorrow at the check-in, you can't check in your bike. So race number is mandatory to have tomorrow also. Only athletes have access to the transition area, and uh, please don't mark your bike nor bag in any way. Every year we see some paintings on the bike bags, uh, some, I don't know, plastic bags, balloons on your bike. So officials will remove all these markings, so there is no point to spend your energy on this. And as mentioned before, bike technical service is available in transition area. What you can leave on the bike are, of course, bike shoes, if they are attached to the pedals. Uh, all the foods, food drinks that you need during your bike ride, you can attach to your bike. Helmets must be placed in the blue bike bag. You can't leave them on the bike. And you can see, of course, the bike bag racks on T1. And you have access to your blue bike bag on race day morning. So uh, you can bring your drinks, food on Saturday morning. You don't need to bring them tomorrow. If we talk about red run bag, then you bring it tomorrow and you don't have access to your red run bag. So shoes, food, everything you need during the run, you just need to prepare this red run bag for tomorrow. So on Saturday morning, you don't have access to red run bag. And red run bag you also bring to T1, and we bring all the red bags here to T2. And don't worry, your bikes will be secured during the night, so we have video surveillance, we have security people available in T1, so no bikes will get lost. On Saturday morning, you just need to take your swim cap and timing chip with you if you come to T1. Again, as mentioned, we have bike technical service available if you need some last minute adjustments. If you bring your own pump, you can't leave it in the transition, you can't leave it in your bike bag, so you just need to take it out from the transition and leave it to your support team. So no pumps uh, can be left in your bags. If you want to change your clothes, you can do it in T1. In start area, we don't have changing tents, so all the changings you can do in uh, T1. Then you have personal needs bags. Uh, one for the bike course, this is orange, and one for run course, which is black. Uh, you also prepare them for Saturday morning, so you don't need to bring them tomorrow. Personal needs bags you can leave uh, just before entering T1 on Saturday morning. Bike course, personal needs station, we can see it later in the maps. It's at the end of the bike lap. Uh, you have three laps on the bike, but you have access to your bike personal needs bag only once. So it's up to you if you pick up your personal needs bag after the first bike lap or after the second bike lap. You don't have access to it on both laps. So 
Once you take it, you take your stuff, give the plastic bag back, and uh, we throw it away. So after the second lap, you don't have access to the bike uh, personal needs bag. And if you come to the bike personal needs station, you need to stop, rack your bike, and volunteer will bring your uh, personal needs uh, back to you. This is in a bike personal needs station. On run personal needs station, it's a little bit different. You have access to your run personal needs bag on every lap. So you have basically, you can have four times access to your uh, run personal needs bag. And in run personal needs station, you have to pick up your uh, personal needs bag yourself. So there is no volunteer bringing it to you. you. You can see they are laid on the ground. There are numbers, one to 100, 100, one to 200, and so on. So you will go to your plastic bag, take your stuff. You can leave it there, and every lap you can have access to your run personal needs bags. And uh, please be sure that you don't leave any valuables in it because personal needs bags won't be returned after the race. So uh, you will leave it there and we dispose them and you don't have access to them after the race. Race start on Saturday morning at 6.45. You all will receive light blue swim cap. All world, all world athletes have received golden swim cap. We have rolling start. So in the start area, we have five corridors. So five athletes will start at once after every five seconds. So start procedure will take approximately 15 minutes. And you can uh, do warm up from six o'clock till 6.25. So warm up area is quite a small area next to the start area. We have a rescue team also on the water, but it's just uh, you can basically jump in the water, do a few strokes and uh, just feel the water, let's say. Swim course, it's two laps. After the first lap, you have to come out of the water before entering to the second lap. Today, the water temperature at 2 o'clock was 19.6 degrees, which means wetsuits are allowed. Uh, if uh, the water temperature gets lower than 18.3, then you can use neoprene booties. Neoprene swim cap you can use in every water temperature, though this is up to you. And swim course cutoff time is two hours, 20 minutes. So this is the swim course. We have a long straight after the start, which is about one kilometer. And then there is a, a right turn. So basically what you have to follow is the first white buoy. The, up to this point, you can do your official swim training tomorrow. But during the race, you just uh, pass it. Number two is actually your first turn buoy. Then number three, and number four is the only one which is on your uh, left hand. So all the white buoys will be on your right hand side. The red buoy will be on your left hand side. And also there are some uh, yellow marker buoys on all along the course. So these will be also on your uh, right hand side. After the first lap, you exit the water, jump to the second lap, and the second lap is exactly the same in, in the means of distance. So 1.9 kilometers first lap and 1.9 kilometers the second lap. After exiting the swim, you will uh, need to put your wetsuit, swim cap, goggles, everything in your blue bike bag. And uh, you, you can see the backdrop area tomorrow if you come to check in. So after the swim, first you take your uh, blue bike bag. There are tents for changing. You can use them. If you don't want, there are also the chairs. You, you don't have to go to the tent. After the tents, there are backdrop area where you leave your blue bike bag and then run to your uh, bike. Before you take your bike, your helmet must be fastened. And uh, also, your race number must be on your back during the bike course. So uh, we strongly recommend you to put your beep number on the bl blue bike bag, not to go to swim with it. It's not forbidden to swim with a beep number, but we recommend strongly to put it in a blue bike bag. So uh, just uh, uh, it's, it's mandatory on the bike course. So, And if you go to the exit the, uh, transition area, you can see the mount line on the ground. So we have two officials with uh, flags on the mount line. So after the mount line, you can actually start uh, biking. So before that, you just uh, run together with your bike. And after finishing the race, you can collect your bags from T2. 
So from half past five till 30 minutes after the midnight. And if you come to check out, please take your race number with you. It's better to have your race number than wristband because on your race number, it's, your number is better visible than just to look at your wristband. So here is the map of the T1. So after swim, you will come to the changing area. There are, uh, of course, toilets available, uh, bike, uh, bike bag racks. You make your changes over there, then run to your bike racks, grab your bike, and run out of the transition area. Bike technical support is also visible here. You can see it tomorrow, and the mount line is out of the transition area on the road already. Bike course is three laps. We have total nine aid stations. You can see kilometers here. These are also mentioned in the athlete's guide. Personal needs stations, as mentioned before, after the first bike lap and after the second lap, but you can have access just once to their bike personal needs stations. In all aid stations, you can find some food, drinks, toilets, uh, spare tires, some basic tools if you have any technical issues with your bike. On the bike course, you will receive uh, water in these bottles. You can see afterwards, you can come and see after the briefing, and uh, energy drink in uh, bike bottles. So uh, should th these all should fit to your bottle cages. No personal foods or drinks can be supplied to you by your support team. So if you need your own drinks and foods, you can put it in your personal needs bags. So uh, no outside assistance during the race. Every aid station has got littering areas, so you can litter only in uh, the aid stations. If you're doing it outside the littering, uh, outside the aid stations, you will receive the blue card, which is a five minute time penalty. So please respect uh, these areas. So uh, only in littering, only in aid stations, you can litter. Race number must be visible on the, on the back. You can't uh, use any cameras or phones in a distractive manner. So if you have your, let's say, sport watch or any, er, anything on your bike, of course you want to measure your, I don't know, distance, time, heart rate and so on, this is okay. But as soon as you're gonna, let's say, take photos, uh, make phone calls, this is absolutely not allowed. If you have any technical issues or you need medical aid during the race course, so we have lots of motorbikes on the bike course who will see you if you are on the side of the course. They will stop and will see if you need any help. So if it's a technical or medical aid, so you just uh, will receive it during the bike course anyway. So here is the bike course. After exiting T1, we go to the main road out of the city. Turn right. So first, first aid station is at 21, 22 kilometer. So this is the out and back section. And we come back on, there is a small loop and back to the city. Turnaround point is after T2 on the main road. Actually the sign is already up, so you can see it already now. And you go to the second lap. In the second lap, uh, just uh, Opposite side of the aid station here is the personal need station. So after the first and second lap, you have access to there, but as mentioned, only once. And you are doing three laps. Few words about bike course rules. So this is a non-drafting race, obviously. Draft zone is 12 meters, and you have 25 seconds to pass the athlete in front of you. And once you have been overtaken, you have to move out of the draft zone. If you're staying too long in the draft zone, you will also receive the blue guard for drafting. If you are repassing before you have, let's say, 12 meters gap with the athlete, so you will receive the yellow card, which is a one minute time penalty. And you have to, of course, ride on the right hand side of the road. So you will go in the middle just to pass the athlete in front of you. And please don't go over the center, center line of the road. The pictures under this slide, they don't mean that you can't use a pink uniform. Yes, you can, but this is the riding positions which you can't uh, 
have during the bike course. So you, you need to keep your hands on the handlebars. You have to be in contact with your saddle and also feet on the pedals. So this is mainly for uh, if you are going down in the downhill section. So uh, all these positions are not allowed. This is the new rule from this year. So just please be, please be familiar with this. So if you get the yellow card, you will receive one minute time penalty. If it's a blue card, it's a five minute time penalty. So yellow card is for blocking, which is just riding in the middle of the road without the reason. Blue guard is littering or drafting, and red guard is disqualification. If you will get three blue guards, this is also disqualification. So if you have one, let's say, if you get one blue guard and one yellow guard, this is total six minutes in the penalty tent. If you get two blue guards, then it's ten minutes in the penalty tent. If you get three blue guards, so this is disqualification. You can collect as many yellow cards as you want, but blue guards, three is maximum, then it's disqualification. Swim plus bike, cutoff time is 10 hours, 30 minutes, which is standard for Ironman events. Penalty tent is located just before the dismount line. Actually, you can see it already now. Then penalty tent is up. It's just, uh, let's say, 50 meters from here. If you go outside the tent, basically, you can already see it. So. You have access to penalty tent only once, so it's at the end of the bike. So you don't have access to penalty tent after the first bike lap or after the second bike lap. It's just before the dismount line. So in case you receive blue or yellow card, please stop in the penalty tent because uh, otherwise uh, your result will be in DSQ in the final results. If you come to penalty tent, uh, technical official will ask what uh, colors did you receive, how many, and according to that, the, it's your time penalty. If it's five minutes, six minutes, 10 minutes, 11, depending on your number of your cards. And if you come to penalty tent, your bike number and helmet number will be slashed, which is again, standard procedure. If everything goes well, after the dismounting, Bike catcher will take your bike, so you don't need to rack your bike anywhere. You just uh, hand it over to your bike catcher. Bike catcher will take your bike to your designated area in T2, where you can collect it after the race. Once you have given your bike to your bike catcher, you can pick up your red run bag, uh, go to the tent, or you, if you don't want to make bigger changes, you can stay outside the tent. There are benches, so you can sit down and uh, make your change. You can leave your bike shoes on your uh, bike. This is OK. And after you have completed the change, just leave your run bag, red run bag to your backdrop area, So, which is after the changing tents, you can see it. And you can pick up your blue and red bag after the race in the evening when we have closed the bike course at half past five. This is the map of transition two. So uh, bike in is right here. This mount line and the uh, penalty tent is just here next to each other, which is uh, not uh, visible here on the screen, but you can see it outside. You just basically run straight forward. Bike catcher will take your bike and you go straight to the changing area, make your change. Here is the backdrop area and head to the run course. Quite easy if you look around. I'm sure it's not very complicated. Run course is four laps. We have total 16 aid stations plus personal aid stations on every, every lap. So you can find these kilometer numbers in the athlete's guide also. Again, in all aid stations, you can find food, drinks, and toilets. Uh, on run aid stations, you will get drinks in these uh, reusable cups. So once you get this uh, or you pick up the cup, please dispose it in the yellow bins, which you can see in all eight stations. There are these Ringo uh, bins. You can see it in the eight stations. So if you take the drinks, please just dispose them to the recycle bin. If, you, if it falls just next to the recycle bin, this is okay. You don't have to put it inside, but please try to put it in the bin as, as close as possible. 
Littering is same as in the bike course, it's allowed only in the eight stations. So during the run, all your, I don't know, gels, bars, bananas, whatever you eat during the run, just uh, leave the litter only in the eight stations. We have quite enough eight stations after, let's say, every basically three kilometers. So prepare your uh, plan accordingly. During the run, you have to wear the race number in front, so it's visible in the front. Any outside assistance, again, it's forbidden, so you can't get any food, drinks, whatever, from your support team. So they can only cheer you, basically. And crossing the finish line with a non-participating individual, it will be TSQ. So please come across the finish line just by yourself, so no friends, kids, I don't know, <laughs> any, any friends, just, just you will cross the finish line. So here is the run course. You are going out from the T2, and then you have uh, two out and back sections. And after the first out and back section, if you come back exactly at the five kilometer mark on every lap, there is a personal need station. And there is a small out and back section over here. And then you come back to the race center. And here in the race center, you can see actually you have a turnaround point around the car. So we have a car outside there. So after first, second, and third lap, you make the turn around the car. And after the fourth lap, you just go straight to the finish. So there are signs in place during the race. So you can see if you need to go straight to the finish or to the next lap. So next lap is around the car. Finish is just straight to the finish. So if you go outside, you can see it really well. In the finish area, if you come to the finish area, let's say this is the last less than 100 meters, make sure that your number is visible in the front. Zip up your tree suits if you have a zipper in front. Uh, crossing the finish line, as mentioned, e with a non-participating uh, individual, it's not the load. And finish cutoff time is 17 hours, so at midnight, approximately, we close the finish. After the race, you will receive medal, you will receive finisher t-shirt. Actually, we make exchange of your timing chip, so if you give your timing chip, you get the t-shirt. And all what is written here, it's, it's for you. Free burgers, free drinks, and so on. So uh, you, you are really hungry at the finish. You will receive timing chip tomorrow when you come to check-in. So we do the check-in procedures. If the, your, everything is okay with your bike, helmet, blue and uh, red bag, after that you will receive the timing chip. Please don't forget it home on Saturday morning if you come to the race. In case you lose your timing chip during the race, you will receive new one in transition area. So whether it's in, uh, you lose it on, during the swim, you will get new one in T1. If you lose it in, uh, during the bike, you will receive the new timing chip in T2. And after you finish the race, uh, please don't exit the finish area with your timing chip. You, it, you will, let's say, you will give it, uh, you will exchange it with a finisher t-shirt, but just, uh, it's just a reminder that uh, nobody walks out with a timing chip from the finish area. In case you want to have a protest, so deadline for protests is Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. Uh, you can get protest forms from me. So in the Finnish area, you can uh, ask uh, volunteers or people if you can't see me. So uh, they will call me and uh, we can discuss what's, uh, what's the situation. Protest fee is 50 euros, but also just to inform you, drafting penalties can't be protested. So. Uh, Hopefully, we don't have any protests. And the award ceremony will be on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock here on the stage. So top three of each age, age group, top three, three clubs, and also slots for Ironman uh, World Championships. So women will get slots for this year's Ironman World Championships. Men will get slots for next year's Ironman World Championships. So this is the last slide from me. So now it's time for questions. If you want to ask it public or if you want to ask it private, so I'm here for your questions. Yes, yes, we have one question. 
Sorry, I have to come closer. No, you won't get any lap bands on the run course, so you have to count your laps uh, yourself, so four laps. Uh, from T1 to swim start, you have to walk. It's approximately 600 meters, so let's say, please consider approximately 10 minutes just to walk, walk relaxed, and uh, so it's, it's approximately 600 meters from T1 to swim start. White bags, uh, where you put your streetwear or warm-up clothes, you can leave in the start area. So just uh, pack everything in a white bag, and the white bag uh, collection point is uh, at the start area. Sorry. Yeah, car park is available here, which is uh, open, so for everyone, so yeah, free first come, first <laughs> serve basis. Yeah, we don't have any drinks, so... Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to have drink immediately after the swim, you just need to use the drinks that you have on your bike. So uh, we provide you drink, the first drinks in the first aid station. So uh, if, you need to, if you need some drink immediately after the swim, so yeah, you need to have it on your bike. So if there are not any more questions, I will stay here if you want to ask something in private. But yeah, anyway, thank you for the briefing and uh, good luck for the race.